Hey, I'm going to do a review of the Maker Pi RP2040 from Cytron. Uh, well, it's made by the company Cytron. They're a Malaysian company. And it's a robot controller, a relatively small robot controller in size anyway. It has seven grub connectors on it. Um, two terminals for your motors, terminal for VN for your battery, um, a LiPo connector for a single cell LiPo, on off switch, um, piezo buzzer that you can play sound through, a button to turn that on and off so you don't have to have the sound, um, two user usable programmable buttons, some status LEDs that are connected to the GPIOs, um, and they're connected through transistors so they're not powered through the GPIO itself, not pulling any power from there. Um, motor test buttons. The motor driver is a MX1501. Um, it will run continuous without a heat sink for, at one amp. Um, and probably with a, with a heat sink, you can, you could go a little over that, but I wouldn't go way too much over it. Um, it's more geared toward hobbyist type motors like the TT or BO motors like these are. Or the little N20 motors like you see on a lot of robots these days. Um, it's a good value board. Um, you have a micro B um, USB port, a servo header hub, um, two Neo pixels, um, your boot and reset buttons, um, a built in RP2040, so that's a good thing. You don't have to get an extra one. And, okay, let's go over to power. Um, it can be powered from a single cell LiPo or one um, lithium ion battery. And that's what I have here is one. It's got power boost. So with that one battery, it will boost it up to six volts um, coming out on the header. And, um, and run the motors. And I'll demonstrate that in a little while. Um, you can have up to six volts in, um, and I, that will boost. So up to a point, I think it boosts up to like seven volts. So you don't want to run any um, servos that that are aren't rated for six volts. I mean, excuse me, ab above six volts on on that header, if you're using six volt battery. Um, let's see here. Uh, Got your charging circuitry, so it will charge a single cell LiPo or lithium ion. Um, I don't think it'll, it will it will not charge anything else. It's not made for that. Um, you got your motor test buttons again. Um, you got your power boost over here. And um, I guess that's about it on the board itself. Um, it only has the Grove connectors, so you have access to um, two IOs per Grove connector and then four here. So that gives you a total of 18 IOs that you have connection to or access to um, to be able to use for your, your own projects. So um, it... With it only coming with the Grove connectors, you don't have any way to hook up anything other than that. Um, it does come with four of these Grove to DuPont connectors. Let's see here that you can use. Um, also comes with some standoff feet, rubber feet, or silicon, and a little Phillips head screwdriver. So that's what comes in the box. Um, but if you need to connect anything. Without that, the, the Grove connectors, it'd be kind of hard. I mean, you might be able to get a DuPont up in there. I'm not sure. Um, but it's not a big problem. You can, like I said, it comes with four of these, and you can actually buy more of these. Um, I've bought them before from M5, and I know Seed Studio sells them, and you can probably get them on AliExpress with no problem. And Adafruit probably sells them too, maybe. Um. Okay, what I have for the test is uh, um, a little wood frame platform, 
um, with a servo glued to it. And I have a time of flight sensor with a little 3D printed mount I made here. There's the time of flight sensor in the servo. And I have two TT or BO motors, whichever one you want to call them. Um, single cell lipo and a uh, ball caster for tail dragging. Um, the motors I did with um, a 3D printed bracket I made. And then I double sided sticky taped them down, got them to where I wanted, measured, and then I squared the wheels up or, and um, did a, put a touch of um, hot glue on, on there to keep it in place. The double sided sticky tape actually would have kept it in place, but I wanted the wheels to be able to stay in, in um, square. It's pretty important um, to drive straight if you can um so what i'll do is i will do a little quick demonstration get this set here okay and i started with the demo code that comes on the bot um it's got Cir circuit python on the board so I just used that. I didn't want to change it out. Um, I probably will end up doing it with a um, embed um, framework for the Arduino. Um, there's two frameworks for the Arduino for the Raspberry Pi Pico or RP2040. One is um, the older one, and I think it's got a little more options in it. Um, and that's the embed version. And then there's another one out there too i'll put a link in the description for both of them but anyway this is circuit python i just left it on there there's a lot of good coverage they have for circuit python since that's what they're trying to go with but you don't have to use that um and what i did is i started with that basic driver and i modified it to do obstacle finding not avoidance but finding um and i added the uh, time of flight sensor for my distance sensor, got it connected to this Grove connector right here. It's going through I2C. And then, <clears throat> then the motors are connected to the driver, of course, and then the servo there, and then the one button powering it. So I'm going to turn it on, and um, well, I'll, I'll explain what it, what it does. The looks for obstacles. So um, to start it up, we'll go ahead and turn it on. Start it first. Okay, place charge. Um, and to make it drive, um, you hit GP20 and it drives forward. And right now it's scanning for, for things in the way. So I'll put my hand there. It's about eight inches is what I have it set to. So now it looked left then right to see which, um, area is got the most, um, room to turn. So it does that. So stops, backs up. And then looks left and right, finds which one's got the most room to turn, and then turns that direction and goes forward again. And then repeat and rinse, that's all it does. So we can do that again, and it will make left closer, so it's going to turn right. So there it went, turn right. And now we'll do it where right comes in, and right is the closest. So turn left that time. So hit GP21 that button to stop it and you can see the the leds there um get out of the way flashing that's the i2c going through there um those the status leds are pretty nice but it had code in there um to change the um neo pixels as it as as the loop went so i left that in in the code that's actually the only thing that's left in the code now um and so it, it changes the, I thought it was a nice effect. It changes those NeoPixels as it's driving. So um, when it's not driving, um, I've got it set to make a noise when it gets to the distance of, of sense, you know, the, the threshold distance I have. So it starts beeping and closer. You know, closer you get, the faster it beeps. The further away you, the slower it beeps. So just something to play with there. 
and you could use it to test your threshold distance. So, like I said, I've got it set to about eight inches because you want to stop. So you're going to kind of roll forward before you can get it stopped and and or completely stopped. So you get about eight inches, and what you're going to end up with is you'll end up stopping about halfway from there. So about about three to four inches from the sensor, and um, any closer, then you're going to stop and you're going to hit things all the time because it's going to stop and then as it rolls forward, it's going to hit them. So you, you want to kind of include that buffer into your, to your, to your code. But, um, I really like it. Um, you know, it's a great value. It's only around $10 us, um, you know, plus your shipping. Um, lots of people sell it. I mean, you can actually get it from Cytron too. So, um, but it's pretty nice. I like the sound. I like the the power options it has. You can charge a battery. Um, you got the little neo pixels and uh, LEDs you can use for status or or other things. You could animate stuff there if you wanted to. Um, it's inexpensive, but it's made really well. Um, and easy to use, and it would be easy to use for beginners, uh, I think, and um, for that, and that's their target audience, I think. But you don't have to be a beginner to use it. So anyway, um, I, I really do like it and I may buy another one. Um, you could use it for things like weather, environmental robots, um, just a general ver you know, version of a, a Pico board type type thing. So it, it would be good. And um, well, I hope this um, helps somebody decide whether to get it or not. Um, thanks a lot.